Final segment with the uh, publisher of The Observer, Matt Walsh. All right, I want to talk about politics, how you interview candidates. When, when you have a reporter or when you're interviewing a candidate who's running for office, I notice a little bit of a different kind of style in The Observer, that they ask a little bit more questions about personality and background, kind of like what I do with the bands and the restaurants and stuff. I notice that kind of questioning taking place in the Observer. Is that conscious? Do you have your, your reporters try to ask a little bit different questions than maybe they're used to getting? Or well, we take uh, a two-pronged approach to this most of the time. We, in the course of an election, prior to an election, we try to write a personality profile so people will be able to get to know someone as a person. And then we follow that up later on with a Q&A on issues so we can find out where they stand on the issues. Okay. So that, that gives, the first part is what I, what I don't see in a lot of other newspapers. What about the role of the newspapers in influencing elections? Um, this is a controversial subject, and, and I hear debated, uh, public officials debate this question all the time. How much of a bump does a candidate get when they get a, endorsements of the newspapers? And uh, I'll just give you like Bill First, for example, was not endorsed by every newspaper it, it, they all endorsed Adora, but first still won by a healthy margin. But it seems to me they do have some kind of an impact. How much of an impact do you think, if, if there's a consensus among the newspapers in town behind somebody? It's funny how, you, how this uh, occurs here, but all the candidates love to get the endorsement of the Sarasota Herald Tribune. And um, I don't know whether it really helps them or not. Um, Vern Buchanan obviously thought that it did. I can tell you out on Longboat Key, where the Longboat Observer always endorses candidates for town commission, uh, we have almost a spotless record. Every candidate that we have endorsed except one has lost. <laughs> <laughs> so that shows you what kind of influence the Kiss press the has. Death. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, finally, real quick, we have about 30 seconds. What do you, look, the observer, look for in a particular candidate? What sort of qualities and do you look for, just in general? The number one thing is, uh, there are two things that we look for. Uh, what do they say about freedom, protecting and expanding people's freedoms? And what do they say about uh, capitalism and the free enterprise system? Uh, those are the two things that we primarily judge candidates on. And they better be pro on both those issues uh, before we endorse them. Okay, Matt, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate you being part of Clout 941. Where can people find the Observer, just Ooh. in general? We have the Observers in over 400 locations throughout uh, the greater Sarasota and Manatee. I would say the easiest places, libraries, public places, city halls, uh, grocery stores, drug stores, your favorite restaurant or retailer around the corner. All right, now it is time for everybody's favorite segment, our Weasel of the Week. Pop goes the pop goes the wine and the weasel. I see the empty pocket needs a refill. I got a squad with a list of complainers. I should have started rape. This week's Weasel of the Week is former, now, uh, Sheriff's Deputy Brian Longo, or Brian Longo. Brian uh, uh, was uh, transporting uh, a young lady named Katherine Davidson who had just gotten in an argument with her husband and the two of them kind of went at it and she smacked him with a belt allegedly and was, uh, was when she was uh, arrested and taken to jail she had $900 cash in the house which she understandably wanted to take with her. Uh, Brian, Longo filled, Brian Longo filled out the property receipt for $900 and had her sign it and she signed it. However, on the way to the jail, he pulled off to the side of the road, got out, was working apparently on some paperwork on the side of the road, got back into the van and continued to transport her to jail. And when she got to the jail, $400 of her $900 was missing. And the property receipt that she signed for $900 had been altered, changed to $500, and a new signature had been put in place that was not hers. 
Uh, she refused to leave the jail, which most people don't do, but she refused to leave the jail until she got the rest of her $400. An inquiry took place. Mr. Longo refused to take a polygraph exam, and it turned out that it was Mr. Longo who had taken the $400. People, when they go to jail, are in a vulnerable position. It looks like this lady had went there for charges that are either already have been dropped or are going to be dropped. The last thing in the world they need is people in a position of authority to actually steal money from them. Unfortunately, this does happen from time to time, hopefully not very often, but when it does happen, the people need to be dealt with, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. He lost his job, but unfortunately, as Mr. Ms. Davidson wanted him prosecuted criminally, just as she was arrested, but apparently that's not going to happen to Mr. Longo. So he's very fortunate in that respect. However, he does become our weasel of the week. Tune in next week. We are going to shift our focus, as we have been doing, away from political candidates and onto the hot issues in our local community, including we're going to take, tackle the local economy. See you next week.